Hello, in this video we are going to cover the exciting developments in the field of ground effect vehicles and discuss the unique aerodynamics of aircraft that fly or rather glide over a cushion of air close to the ground. The wing and ground effect craft or the ground effect vehicles have been around for nearly 50 years. While theoretically they can operate on land such as over flat planes, they are mainly designed to operate over water bodies. The idea is to make use of the added lift due to the ground effect that is to use the reactive force of air available closer to the surface of the earth or water. The ground effect increases the closer you get to the surface, peaking at an altitude of around 5% of the wingspan where you can get the craft operating at around 2.3 times as efficiently as if it does in free air. Interestingly, during the Cold War era, the wing and ground craft saw development but mainly for military applications. After all, they provided many capabilities that existing technologies couldn't. They could carry a massive amount of payload at high speed. They were stealthy in operation, flying low enough to avoid radar and above water to avoid any sonar detection. They had the potential to fly deep into the enemy waters, even over naval mines. And so the wing and ground craft developed during the Cold War era achieved exactly that. They weren't designed as high efficiency transporting vehicles for civilian use. But things are taking a turn. This is because of two reasons. Firstly, more stringent maritime emission regulations are being enforced and secondly, because of the arrival of electric aviation technology. At present, the maritime technology is undergoing an overhaul after the IMO 2020 regulation. The fuel used by the marine industry is sulfur heavy because it's the lowest cost. Regulatory bodies have been trying to curb the pollutants and have continually lowered the maximum allowable limit for various harmful effluents. The regulation near ports for SOX and NOX levels are even more stringent. There are many transporters that have turned towards electric ferries. Although these have been operating successfully, however, they require huge batteries with capacities of 4 megawatt hour or more, almost equivalent to 40 Tesla Model S battery packs. These electric ferries also require a very robust charging infrastructure. So there's a gap in the market for smaller emission-free sea vessels and this is where the wing and ground craft can be a solution. Let's discuss their general advantages. The wing and ground craft are championed on the basis that they are more efficient than equivalent aircraft and are quicker than equivalent marine vessels. Its fuselage can be made in any shape and is not restricted to tubular fuselage as no pressurization is needed. The wing and ground craft can go six times faster than displacement craft and no infrastructure needs to be laid down. Water is their runway. And with the electric propulsion, there are some added benefits such as better harbor maneuvering. Motors can be spun in reverse for braking. Secondly, distributed propulsion can be used, leading to even more efficient crews. The third advantage is that more energy is available for cruise purposes, and we'll elaborate that in a minute. There's also no problem of foreign object or spray ingestion, as is for combustion engine air inlets. There are zero emissions, and these vehicles are low noise. And compared to EV toll, the required takeoff energy is not very high. Note that the 20% portion of the battery energy that in other electric aircraft is allocated for reserves is not needed in the case of sea vessels and regulatory requirements to certify such an aircraft are much more lenient. Having said that, there are a few disadvantages of wing and ground craft that must be mentioned. Firstly, some of the high aerodynamic efficiency is reduced because of certain design compromises that have to be made due to adverse effects. For instance, the hull needs to be strengthened for seaworthiness, which means compared to an ordinary aircraft, the airframe is heavier. Likewise, there is higher pitching moment on the wings of the wing and ground craft. To counter that, bigger stabilizers have to be used 
which brings with it a drag penalty. Similarly, when operating in choppy waters, the ground effect is reduced and the takeoff is bumpy, if at all possible. For open seas, a larger aircraft is required. A small wing in ground craft operating on open seas would be required to operate out of ground effect too often to make the operation viable. Therefore, open sea operations are for practical purposes limited to larger wing and ground vessels. The wing and ground craft have three different configurations, the Ekranoplan, Reverse Delta and Tandem Wing. The Ekranoplan configuration was used by the Soviets for developing their 100 ton capacity Lone class wing and ground craft. The Reverse Delta configuration was developed by the renowned German aeronautical engineer Alexander Lipisch and has a number of advantages. These include self-stabilization and a very small harbor footprint. This design also has a lower movement of the center of pressure while attaining high lift to drag ratio. The reverse delta wing arches down and has a wide leading edge and a small trailing edge. The white portion of the wing captures the air and funnels it down, thereby maximizing the ground effect. It is for these reasons that a Singapore-based company called Widgetworks obtained the patents for this design and have developed their aircraft called the Airfish 8. This is a two-crew, six to eight passenger aircraft that operates on 500 horsepower automotive engine. Note that other light transport aircraft with similar capacity and payload such as the DHC-3 Otter and PSC P750 have aeronautical engines that are 600 to 750 horsepower. More recently, Regent Aircraft has announced the Sea Glider, a 12-passenger, 8-propulsor, high-wing, fully electric wing and ground craft. This aircraft will never fly over one wing span above water. Its range is 180 miles at a speed of 180 miles per hour. For takeoff, it uses a hydrofoil, thereby substantially lowering the required peak power and also provides higher comfort during takeoff and landing phases. Unlike most wing and ground craft that have the aspect ratio in the range of 1 to 3, the Sea Glider has aspect ratio of around 6, closer to that of a conventional aircraft. Larger wingspan also means that it can fly a bit higher than other wing and ground craft while still remaining in ground effect. The Sea Glider can transport passengers six times faster compared to ferries. For example, the 75 mile route between Cherbourg and Portsmouth that is normally covered by a ferry in six hours can be covered by a Sea Glider in just 40 minutes. It should be noted that the current energy density of the battery is limiting the electric aircraft size to be up to 5-seater and have a range of 100 to 150 miles. For a sea glider, the payload can be higher. However, at present, with the existing battery technology, we cannot make wing and ground crafts that will transport payloads of more than 1000 kilograms. Having said that, larger electric wing and ground craft can be made but will have to be powered by hydrogen fuel cells. Although hydrogen technology at present is expensive, but on a larger vessel, some of its generation can be done with energy from onboard solar panels, retractable wind turbines, or a combination of these. The design of solar powered wing and ground craft are currently being explored. There is no doubt that electric wing and ground craft can provide an efficient, emission-free and low-cost solution for traveling between coastal cities and island hopping. And with this, the video is concluded. If you learned something from it, please do give it a thumbs up. Thank you for your attention.